Hey everyone, I'm Logan Nicholson, this is Australian Astronomy, and today you're watching my PixInsight pre-processing workflow. So, of course, my workflow is what I prefer to use. It's not, it probably won't apply to everyone's photos, and it might may not be the best workflow at all, but it's what I personally find works great for me. So, first we're doing the pre-processing step, which is the calibration and alignment of sub exposures before actually starting the processing. So this involves first we'll look at the subs, make sure they're all good, and then we'll register them, calibrate them with flats and darks, etc., and then we'll stack them. So first we'll start off with a blink. And what this does is let us view all of our pictures. It just plays them back as if they were a movie, so we can see the differences between subs very quickly. So what we'll see once this loads, so what we'll see is just this sort of blank picture of one sub. We'll hit stretch first. This uh, this makes sure all, all the images are about the same brightness. So from this point, once it's all stretched together, we'll set the time to zero seconds. This means they'll just play immediately after each other and we'll hit play. So what we're looking for here are stretched out subframes. And at the moment, I'll just flick through manually. That might be one there. So I'll just go and delete that directly from the image folder. So that is green number 13. So I'll take green number 13. I'm just deleting it now. Right, so 13 is deleted. Keep going. That one as well. It's green number 26. So what we're looking for is just sub exposures that have been slightly blurred out, and that won't really make uh, stacking any better by including them. Where it will just be better off to leave them out. So 37. So this can just be tracking errors, winds, anything really. And I'll, just, I'll get back to you when this is finished. Alright, so I just finished my blinking and deleting of subframes. So now what I'll do is I'll take the script, batch processing, and batch pre-processing. So what this does here now is basically uh, we have, so it's batch pre-processing and basically it does what's in the name. So once you have the light frames added in here and you add your other frames, it will actually calibrate them to the bias darks and flats and it will also uh, align the subs so you, this basically skips out on a few steps which are really unnecessarily complicated if you are using batch pre-processing so I'll start adding in my sub exposures now I'll just take all of these ones open so you can see it splits them up into HA, red, green, blue Flats. I use master flats. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend this, but with my setup, they seem to work fine. And all that docs. The minute I'll leave out bias because I'm having some issues with that, and it doesn't seem to affect the image too bad. So again, this is just my sort of workflow for astrophotography. The basic steps you are able to follow. But it's always great to work out something on your own, make your own sort of style in terms of image processing. So now it's asked for the registration reference image. We'll make that my first HA sub. And by the way, if you're using master flats, darks, or biases, it's important to check these. Output directory, I'll just set to the folder and I'll hit run. This will take about 15, 10, 15 minutes, depending on how fast your processor is. Okay, so our uh, batch pre-processing just finished, and now it is time to weigh our images. So the reason why we might do this is because some images are more noisy or have more elongated stars than other, so we want to do with those images is weigh them less so they make less of an impact in stacking. So images with smaller stars will produce more results in terms of stacking and influence the final image more. 
So, we will go to process, all processes, and some frame selector. From here, we'll pick routine measure subframes, add files, and then we'll take our registered files, which was just generated by batch preprocessing. We'll take our HA subs. For a DSLR, this will just be all of your subs, basically. Now, you want to pretty much just leave this blank. This should be okay. For me, I just prefer to put in the numbers I've calculated, but it doesn't matter too much. Camera resolution set to 16-bit, as most of our cameras capture in 16-bit resolution. From here, we can hit the circle button, and that will start weighing our image files. Okay, so now the uh, thing has finished, and sorry, now the routine is finished, and we are left with these two graphs. We don't really need to worry about this one. The main thing we want to look at is this graph. So basically, these outliers are single subs that have a very high sort of star size, which might be just trailing or clouds might have gone over, etc. So we really just want to eliminate the outliers, one and two mainly, and I'll just give three, number three and number four in terms of the outlier size. That's in FWHM, we'll click on that, go down to eccentricity, that looks good, all of the outliers are pretty much removed, and then we'll go down to stars. And I might just delete this first one, and then that looks good again. So from here, we are ready to input our weighting formula. So I'll put this here. Uh, I'll put this formula in the description of the video so you can use it as well. We hit play there and then it weights the things. So we'll select our output directory and make it whatever you like. I just call it weighted and I'll hit choose. From there we change our routine to output subframes, so it outputs the weights with this keyword, and then we hit apply glue. Alright, so we just finished our uh, subframe selector, so now it's actually time to stack the images, and that'll conclude our batch pre-processing, or sorry, pre-processing stage of the image. So go to process, all processes, image integration. From there, We'll click Add Files, then go to our Weighted folder. For me, because I'm doing a super loom, I'm just going to select all of them. But normally you'd go by individually with each filter and then stack those on their own. So once those are added, that looks good. All files are in there. And then for our weight, we'll do Fits keyword. Our weight keyword will be SS Weight. Because that's what the subframe select selector outputted. You can actually change this keyword, but I wouldn't bother with that. Uh, from there, we pretty much leave all of this on its own. That should be fine. And we still set a rejection algorithm to linear fit clipping, as that's what will suit us best for the large number of subs we have. And then that's it. And then we hit apply global. And then you do this individually for each of your filter, or if you're doing RGB, just the one row. Alright, so now I have my... I'm just going to take my luminance file first, but you can do an RGB if you're using a DSLR. And I'll hit Control plus A. So that does an auto stretch for us, just very simple. And it shows a bit of the detail, so it's... Imagine like performing just a normal histogram stretch. Okay, so it's always important to save your sub, your integrated files, sorry, as they do not save themselves after integration. And that just about concludes our pre-processing step. If you want to see more about how I process my images, then definitely stay tuned for parts two and maybe three, if I do get around to making those this time. And I hope you found this tutorial very helpful, especially if you're a beginner, and I hope you feel more comfortable in your processing abilities in PixInsight, as it can be a very challenging program to learn for just a beginner.
So hope this was very helpful. And this is Logan Nicholson signing out.